sustainable future. So forget it when you see these kinds of things. But it might look like this. This is Handelwasser House in Vienna, uh, headquarters of the, the fam famous now past Handelwasser, the artist, architect, lab, and whatever he was. But what this shows is buildings integrated with green. We have all these buildings already. We have all these walls, we have all these windows, they're already there, they already have their imbe embedded energy in them, spent, used, gone. We don't need to replace them with glass towers and incredible you know, structures, we need to use the structure that we've got to create our green space. Now this isn't edible food here, but it's green on buildings. It might also look like this. This is um, some architect's idea of a hydroponic food system. It's a basically on a glazed skyscraper, it's a double glazed greenhouse, if you like, built onto the side of a building full of NFT hydroponics, that's nutrient film technique, basically plastic tubes filled with a little, well not filled, but with a little film of water and nutrients pumped along the bottom, plants plugged in the top, very productive, works, gives you your thermal screening from the building, turns that sunlight instead of into heat in the building, turns it into energy growth and plant, food, plant production food for humans. So you can slide back, back the glass doors at lunchtime and go out and pick your own. Here's some other examples. This one on the left is in Australia. Again, same sort of system, NFT system. It might look like this. Relatively low input in terms of energy. It won't look like this. Valiant attempt by a company, but they've not got the idea right about energy inputs and outputs. These things trundle around on a greenhouse on conveyor belts, consuming energy, resources, embedded energy in construction. It's just not the way to grow food because the inputs into that system are too great for the reward you get back out. This uses a lot less energy, at least it's only pumping water around, but it is pumping water around continuously, so we can do better than that. And here's one of our food balls. Same as you see there. The main difference is we pump water for maybe nine minutes a day. So we're not pumping it continuously. We just use very, very small amounts of energy. It's still a system that has embodied energy in its construction. You still have to build it, you have to put it up. But once it's there, it's there. And the ongoing energy costs for running it are very, very low. And you could run that off a solar panel. Now, the next step on is to start linking these systems. And we talk about aquaponics. This is an aquaponics system. Um, aquaponics is, is the combination of fish culture and hydroponics. And in aquaculture, which is conventional fish growing where you grow plants in, uh, sorry, fish in tubs, they have a bit of a problem because they have to change 10% of the water every day because it becomes polluted. Remember all that ammonia in there. Well, actually, if we think back to that biological cycle, we know that that isn't um, a pollution, it's an output. So we link hydroponics with aquaculture, and we get aquaponics. So here now we have our biological nitrogen cycle, and our plant growing here is a lettuce. Having gone through the filter, we've turned the waste into something usable for the plant. The lettuce consume that nitrate and the clean water goes back to the fish. Not only does the clean water go back to the fish, we also grow food for the fish in the same nutrients. So we can grow duckweed, floating duckweed that the fish like. We can take the, and linking the sister further, thinking a little bit wider and more holistically, all the waste residue from our food production, all the uneaten parts are composted with worms and the worms also are a food source for the fish. The worms also produce a waste liquid, which is also a highly nutritious nutrient liquid feed for aquaponics. So here, you see, we can have an urban system that can run around and around in pretty much a closed loop cycle, using very few energy inputs from external. Sun, rain, fish food, well, even the fish food has come in perhaps on the cycle. So minimal external inputs. That's what future food production has to be about. This we can do on walls, we can do it on urban roof spaces. This is a guy out in Milwaukee in USA who's set up this community program in these little greenhouses. There's work going on in Chicago, and there's quite a lot going on in America actually, Australia, and there's a little bit going on in the UK. This is a community-run project where they 
have, this is all aquaponics. You can see you've got worm compost there that I just mentioned. It's got community involved. They're growing their own food, these guys. And they're doing it very intensively, very productively, in a very, very small space. So retrofit of existing infrastructure is the way forward for all um, you know, urban food farming solutions and treating the outside of the building as this living biomembrane where we combine services and do not only grow food but we'll clean the building waste by using the grey water, um, we'll insulate the building with the green so that it use, loses less energy, we might even grow energy in, in there. This is how we've got to deal with things. There's other things we can do and expand and look at. We can use edible species of plants on the sides of buildings so we can get fruit crops. So these are very simple things like mahonias and vicinians, you know, uh, blueberries, which we could grow on buildings or we could grow in any part or space. They look beautiful, but they have an edible food, highly nutritious. Even mahonias are a superfood. They're full of vitamin C. And you might have one growing in your garden and love its winter flowers and scent and never think that the fruit is actually edible. Same in nut crops. We're actually developing a, a large system that can grow trees or small, certainly large shrubs. Um, and we can grow nut crops, things like hazels and things on the sides of buildings, up on the roofs. Again, it's all part of the urban food cycle, forest gardening mentality and principles. You know, putting food, different kinds of food maybe from what we used to, but a lot of uh, wheat, uh, flowers and things made from nuts are a lot better for you than wheat. Perennial vegetables we can explore. There's all sorts of things that are croppable in some ways. Swiss chard, you know, rhubarb, Jerusalem artichokes, um, glo you know, globe artichokes, things that we can experiment with. And nutrition, I throw this one in because you know, we spend an awful lot of money on the health service in this country and a lot of it is because we eat rubbish. We eat the wrong things. Um, you know, we eat too much wheat, we eat too much food, uh, too much meat, we eat too, too much dairy. They're all bad inputs that our, our human bodies have great problems digesting and dealing with. We are all over-nutrified as people. And, and what we do with ourselves as individuals is much the same as what we do with the planet. It's, it's facing the same problems. So changes of diet, looking at different kinds of future foods is, is really you know, where it's at for, for this. So in conclusion, you know, to feed these 9 million people, if we ever get to that level, uh, and there is a question mark about that, I believe, but uh, we need to grow the food where people are. We need simple, low-cost systems that are easy to retrofit because sustainability starts and ends with food. And that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. That was uh, fascinating. Not only did you dispel the Malthusian myth that uh, all the population could be used to complete the science, but provide the solutions uh, that you can all take, the steps we can take to actually not just tackle the uh, issue of shortage, but how we can actually live healthier, happier lives that benefit nature as well. So I've got a few minutes now for uh, questions or uh, uh, discussion. So if anybody has already asked Mark, this is your opportunity. Your, your product, yes. What is it? It's a hydro, hydroponic growing system. It uh, uses a, an inert rock wall as the growing medium, which is the sort of physical anchorage for the plants. And it's um, carefully calibrated by the equipment you can see there to deliver very precise amounts of nutrients and water to the wall. Uh, it's designed, really acts like a big sponge and holds a big reservoir of water there. And it's designed to, that's why it needs so little input because it's very, very good at retaining the water. It will hold 80% of its volume as water, uh, which means you only need to put a little bit on to, just to keep that sort of, you know, sufficient moisture levels there every day. Uh, well, most of the water is lost through evapotranspiration from the plants. What is it made of? Uh, the rock wool is a mineral, spun mineral fiber. It's, uh, you know, which obviously like every material it has an embed, embodied energy into it. But it doesn't biodegrade, and that's the, that's the principal reason we've chosen this material.